This is the logo that my little brother created for his final year graphic design project. And in five days, he'll be presenting this. He asked me if I could help him out and add a little bit of JBV creative flair to his booth. And I wish that I had said, no little brother, figure it out yourself. Because I ended up going a little bit overboard. So I was playing around with his logo and I noticed when you move the nines across one another, you get this really trippy kind of mesmerizing effect. So I'm thinking we turn the logo into some clear acrylic nines and we build a mechanism that can move them across one another to create that mesmerizing effect. But here's where things get a little bit more complicated than they need to be. Instead of just moving the nines back and forth, my vision is to have the nines rotate around one another to create this continuous motion. Why do I do this to myself? Let's go mechanism hunting. So I hopped onto YouTube and I searched for the mechanism goat. Who am I kidding? Dr. Thang always has a video on my homepage, so I just clicked on that. I wasn't exactly sure what to search for, so I searched chain driven mechanism. And lo and behold, at the very top of the page, I found this mechanism. I was pretty excited because I knew that this was actually doable, but then I realized if I was just doing one nine, this would have been absolutely perfect. But because I'm doing two, they would interfere with each other in this mechanism. So we gotta find something else. So it was back into the search bar and this time I tried keeping direction unchanged while translating and I came across two different mechanisms. The one on the left uses these two offset chains and generally speaking, a single chain drive is tricky enough as it is. So having two feels like it might be a little too much for the time frame that we have here. On the other hand, the one on the right is more similar to the first mechanism that I found. The way it works is it uses the chain to pull a slider around a track. At the top of the track, there's these three arcs and that's what keeps the slider oriented in the same direction as it comes around the curve. With only four days to design, I figured that a single chain drive was more than enough. So the first step was to print a test piece to get a better feel for how this mechanism was gonna work. In the interest of trying to move fast, I forgot something critical, which is that these screw heads stick out. So they're rubbing on the platform, but that's why we do test pieces. Luckily, I was able to gather enough information to know that the only way to really figure out if this mechanism was gonna work was to just full send and design the entire thing. So I did, and then I printed it out along with the drivetrain components, which connect a stepper motor through a 6.25 to one gear ratio to the sprocket here on the left. Just as a quick side note here, if you're wondering why I'm using stepper motors instead of regular DC motors, with a little bit of extra circuitry, the stepper motors can run completely silently. DC motors on the other hand can be powered directly from the wall plug, which is really convenient, but they make a whole bunch of noise. And for comparison, this is the stepper motor. And this is the DC motor. So the stepper motor wins and it's worth the extra electronic complexity. Let's keep going. I grabbed the chain segments off the printer and I assembled the entire thing. And this is what I got, which was honestly working better than I expected. Although there's some obvious problems like the chain tension's a little bit loose and it's just generally kind of janky. Let's fix the chain tension first. So instead of reprinting anything, I just decided to laser cut some holes into a piece of MDF that I can mount the sprockets into. And after a few attempts, I ended up with this chain tension, which was looking really good. I printed out an updated base along with an electronics enclosure that can fit these new electronics that I soldered. And we got something. It's looking way better than it was before. So I threw this panel on to get a better idea of how it would look as it comes around the curve. And I noticed this one really annoying problem. I'm finding that the bearings are getting stuck in the tracks. And honestly, I'm just like running out of time right now. And so I'm just gonna try to eliminate as much inconsistency as possible and just remove the bearings. That's what this is for. And I printed this test track to make sure that it will work and it seems to work like pretty much just as, as well. So. No bearings it is. Hopefully for the last time I printed out another base and the new parts. I assembled the whole thing, turned it on, and it still freaking jams. Come on. After looking back at Dr. Thang's animation, I noticed this, which is like a little notch in the top of the slot. And you can see that the cart kind of wiggles as it goes by. I thought this might just be like a thing in the animation, but as it turns out, adding this little screw here kind of nudges the slider in the right direction so it doesn't jam anymore. Crazy. Such a simple fix. So I designed this piece that has some notches built into it and it slides right into the base. No new base printing required. And I thought my problems were solved. Oh man. So I put the guide piece in and I turned the thing on and it's still getting stuck. The show starts in less than 24 hours. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do, but I'm hoping that when I put the top panels on, it's gonna give it a little bit of guidance and that's hopefully gonna solve all the problems. Fingers crossed, let's go get that off the printer and see if it works. The top panels just connect to these holes in the top of the base. I installed them, plug the thing in, and 
Oh my god, it didn't jam. And it didn't jam again. What a relief. The project is saved. All right, let's finish this thing off. And that meant laser cutting the nines out of acrylic, peeling off the masking. That is so satisfying. Woo. And installing them on the base. Little bro is gonna be here in a minute. He doesn't really know what I've made for him. So we're gonna set the camera up here and I'm not gonna tell him that. Let's see how he reacts. Oh, sheesh. That's real nice. Even better than the thing you showed me. I didn't know how you were gonna do it. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Little bro was pumped and I was pretty satisfied with the outcome. So I was off to the George Brown School of Design in downtown Toronto to check out the show. And this is what the booth ended up looking like. The thesis was a youth sports organization. Little bro had to create an entire brand based off of that concept. The 99 not only represents sports, but it also represents that although perfection is unattainable, chasing it can lead us to do great things. And overall, his thesis turned out amazing. As far as my contribution to the booth goes, I'm very happy with the way that it turned out. It added a little bit of flair, but nothing that would take away from the work that he's already done. Thank you so much for following along on this video. If you have any ideas for things that you wanna see turned into kinetic sculptures, let me know in the comments below, but make sure that I have more than four days to get it done because that was stressful. And on that note, I'll see you in the next one.